Greetings tech enthusiasts and curious minds alike. Welcome to another episode of Polybits. On today's episode, we are going to talk about packet sniffers and cybersecurity. Stay tuned and hope you enjoy the episode. All right, welcome back. So as I mentioned, we will be talking about cybersecurity and packet sniffers today. So first I'll start with what is a uh, packet sniffer and uh, why would we want it? So a packet sniffer is best thought of as, uh, I guess you'd say a letter or a mail. So when you take a, a letter, you put it in an envelope, you put a to address and a from address and you go to your mailbox and then the post office comes, takes it and sends it to where it's going. The recipient on the other end receives that mail they see where it came from, where it was addressed to them, and then when they open it up, they get the data. So a packet sniffer is referring to the data that goes across a network where the packet is the envelope. Now, in that packet, there is a header. The header is resembling of the to and from, along with some other data. And then the data within that packet is going to be the letter that we have written. So on a network, you could imagine there's a ton of information going to and from all types of systems. So our goal today is to write a program using C++ that will be able to grab these packets of data, analyze them, and show kind of who they were going to and who they're from uh, so that we can actually see this information go across. What we will not do today is go into detail on how you can make sense of that data, um, but we can talk about that but the main goal is just to be able to see that data going to and from other systems. Now, I'll be working on a Mac, and on a Mac or a Linux machine, you have the option to put your network card into something called promiscuous mode, which means you can get all network traffic showing through your packet sniffer, not just the information to and from your machine uh, that pertains to you. So it allows you to get a lot more data coming across your network card, um, which is kind of more interesting to look at. Now, cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is a huge umbrella term that pretty much encapsulates everything from a physical threat, somebody walking into a server, uh, a server room or something like that and smashing all the computers, that would be known as a physical denial of service attack. Or it could be somebody hacking your uh, personal device, your email, Pretty much anything evolved around the cyber world, um, again, physical to digital. So it's a, it's a very big term that encapsulates a lot of things. Uh, we're going to be focusing more on the digital space today, but we will have further episodes where we bring on cybersecurity experts, both software and hardware, and uh, discuss more about threat models and a lot more. Uh, but without further ado, let's hop into the actual start of today's episode, which is writing our own packet sniffer. So on my screen, I created a new folder and we called it Demo Packet Sniffer. So we're going to do all of our coding today in VS Code. And on the left, we have our terminal open so we can compile and run our code afterwards. So first thing we need to do is we need to add a file. And for this purpose, we're not going to create a header and a source file and all that. Um, we're gonna keep things pretty simple here and just keep everything into one file here. Now feel free if you want this code you can go and break it out however you would like and it will all be available on uh, our GitHub, the Polybits GitHub, which I'll have linked in the description below. So we're going to call this demo packet sniffer.cpp. Now to save time so we don't spend the entire video uh, writing kind of redundant, not redundant code, but code that doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to copy and paste some quick includes here just to put them in here, but we will talk about them. Um, and you'll notice here I have a small little if and if here that is used because I'm on a Mac and one of our libraries, the uh, if address header here, we use this on our Mac so that we can get our source IP. There are other ways of doing this, but this is the way we've chosen. So we have this little if statement that if we're on an Apple computer, uh, we're going to define Mac OS, and then we'll have a separate section here where we uh, 
grab those addresses uh, a little bit different than if we were on the Linux box. Linux has some other built-in utilities that makes life a little bit easier for that, um, but for our purpose, it doesn't really matter. So we'll go here, and then what we're actually going to do is we're gonna skip ahead to the main. Now, again, to save time, I can copy a section of this because this part doesn't matter too much. Um, we'll dive more into the actual packet um, use itself, and that's going to be used on this library here. That's the PCAP library, and PCAP is a very powerful library for uh, grabbing uh, packet data and pulling it apart so that we can make sense of it. Um, and then if you wanted to, you can modify and talk about other types of things you can do with this. But for this video specifically, it'll just be viewing the data. All right, so let's grab our main. Here we go. Let's plop that in here, just so you guys can see. All right, so it looks like quite a bit, but we're gonna walk through this piece by piece. So if you're new to C++, I'll dive into it a little granular, but not too much. For those who uh, are very comfortable with C++, then feel free to kind of skip ahead of our explanations here to uh, when we get started on the actual PCAP implementation here. But um, to get started, so what we have is our main function, which takes argc and argv. This tells us how many command line arguments we'll be passing through, and this is the array of command line arguments. Now, the reason we are doing this is because if you wanted to automate this of some sort, um, using command line is a lot easier to do that if you're scripting and everything and it doesn't take uh, user interaction when it's actually uh, running. So it won't wait for anything. It'll just run from those arguments. So we check here just to make sure that there are two arguments in there. One is going to be the, um, sorry, the, uh, the program name, and then the second is the actual argument itself. So program name is always going to be there in argv. That's when you actually call it from the command line. But the device name is the device that we want to listen to. So for most computers, I believe it's going to be dev0 if you're using a Mac. Um, you can kind of do an if config or similar on your system to see what it would be. And just to show you on a Mac, on the left here, we can go if config. And what you're looking for is, oh, sorry, it'd be eth0, eth0. So on ours, Right here is EN0. Again, it depends on the system, but um, that's where you're going to find your information there. So let's just clear that out. All right, so moving forward, here we go. We create a couple structs. This is what I was talking about where we're checking to see our local IP. This is, I'm not going to dive too much into this section again because this is not the purpose of the video. The purpose is to talk about PCAP and the capturing of the data packets. Um, but this pretty much here is grabbing that for us, and then we're checking that uh, EN0 for Ethernet Wi-Fi is there. So we'll print out an if statement, or sorry, not an if statement, we'll print out a uh, print statement with your IP address so that we are able to grab that and display so we know which packets are coming to and from which are ours or are not. Um, now again, you gotta remember there's a lot of data coming over um, our network card, especially when we have in promiscuous mode. So that means there's going to be a lot of different addresses going across and there's more than just your network card inside. As you saw when I did my IF config, we have a whole lot of different uh, network adapters in that inside a computer, whether it's Bluetooth, USB, uh, Ethernet, or Wi-Fi, all those different um, platforms or utilities inside your uh, computer are going to have uh, different addresses. Um, but your IP is going to be your local IP for Ethernet, so that should be what you're looking for. Um, now, if you're behind a local network, you're going to have an internal IP, which usually starts with a 192, and then you're going to have an external IP, which comes after your modem, which is going to be how traffic knows to come to your house rather than internal to your uh, local network. Um, we can do more talk about that later in a networking video, um, but again, uh, we'll just keep moving forward here. So here we go, we free that up, and if we are unable to get your IP, it's uh, pretty straightforward. And there's comments and all this code that I put in here, so uh, in our GitHub, if you guys want to go through and read into this a bit more, you can. But we'll move pretty quick so the video's not too, too long. All right, so once we get through that, this is when we get into some more of the uh, PCAP uh, portion of the main function. And this is going to just be... Um, setting up our error buffers and our actual handles and everything like that. So first thing we do is we create our error buffer and we have it set to our uh, maximum side. This size, sorry, this is going to be defined inside our header for the PCAP of 256. And then we have our handle here, which is for our actual PCAP, PCAP object. Now we go, and this portion of the code I left in here just for reference only, but 
what it does is it grabs all the network devices and creates a list of them. That way you can sort through, run through, whatever you need to each of those devices and listen to the one you would like. For our purposes, we've supplied it as a command line argument. So we're not actually going to make use of this, but I left it in here just so people can follow along. And if they want to kind of tweak and play around with it, uh, the code's already there for them. But this will find all the network drives. And also it's a good check. So if for some reason nothing's showing up and we have something else going on, this will tell us that there's an error finding any of the network devices. All right, so I realized that the screen was a little small and I uh, figured I'd make things a little bit bigger and uh, hop back on this. So yeah, so as I just mentioned, this is where you'll find out if there's any errors finding any of the network devices. And then we come down here. This sets the actual device of the, uh, the PCAP device. This is the device that we're going to be listening to in uh, our uh, instance, this is going to be EN0, and let me just clear this on the left and hop into You can do an ifconfig on a Mac, and this will tell you all your different um, network devices. Use quite a bit, but for us, what we're interested in is EN0. That's this guy here. So let's clear that out, and we'll come back to that later. So this keeps track of the device count. Now, as I mentioned, uh, all devs, we're not going to be actually be using this because we set the device name in the... Um, in the command line arguments, but um, pretty much that gets set here. And then we're going to open it up with a uh, live listen. This is where we set the promiscuous mode. Uh, promiscuous mode pretty much just means that we're going to set our network uh, device into a listen for all traffic, not just traffic pertaining to us. And this is done using the uh, one argument here. If you want to know more about the other arguments that are passed into the PCAP open live, you can go on Google, look up the PCAP lib man pages and do a search for PCAP open live. Now from here, uh, we just have the uh, handle. So we open that up. This is what opens the device in that mode. And uh, if for some reason it fails, then we're going to clear all and uh, return one, which means we just exit our program and call it a day. We'll do our cleanup and then that's it. Um, here we have our PCAP loop. Um, which is pretty much we run our handle, uh, the device that we've just opened, and we run this uh, function on that. So this is going to pass through by default through the PCAP loop a bunch of information um, that you see here, which we've actually predefined. Um, I went through and wrote this in uh, on the break there just uh, as I went to make this bigger, but uh, we'll walk through step by step what's done there. Uh, when we're done the, the loop and we're no longer collecting any more packet data, we do a PCAP close. And then free all devs, that's all the devices. And again, we won't actually be using the free all, or the, uh, all devs because we have the device that we set in the command line argument, but uh, it is there for those that wish to uh, actually walk through each of the devices or maybe uh, take user input and choose which device you actually want to go and listen on. So we'll uh, hop up to the packet handler here and uh, we'll go through and actually start that section. All right, so we'll uh, hop over to the packet handler now. The packet handler's at the top here. Okay, so for the actual packet handler function here, this is where we're going to handle all of the, uh, the data, the header information, everything like that that we talked about previously, but that letter that we're going to receive. So this is the function that's going to analyze that data. So that's what we're going to write next. So I have the actual uh, function predefined here. Nothing's inside of it, so we're gonna build this together. So usually what I like to do when starting this is I wanna let the user know when you're reading it where the start of a packet is and where the end of a packet is. So we'll start just using a basic uh, cout function and just state here. I uh, usually add some characters to make it look nice. So I want to, and we'll just say start of packet data Actually, let's just keep it simple. Start. I'll just say packet start. How about that? Packet start. Another 10 stars. Okay. There we go. And then for the end of it, we'll do the same thing. And packet data actually let's keep things equal here that's what I'll do I like to keep them in line so we don't go over under uh, we got two two delete one from this side 
Actually, let's see. Just nitpicking here. I think that looks good. We'll hop to the end and add another end L for a new line. And there we go. So all our code's gonna go in between here. Uh, and that's how we're gonna know. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna, another print statement, we're gonna say that we've got in our packet and we wanna print out what size we're going to expect. So from this, we can hop on and just say, click back. Captured packet of length. And then we can go here. And this is going to come from the packet header. Packet header. And since it is a pointer, we use the arrow operator. And we're going to say the length. And we're going to say that's in bytes. Period. Up to the end. And then those. There we go. So this gives us the packet header length. So now we know, okay, we have our packet data and we don't need the space in here. And that's gonna be what we see at the beginning of each. Let me just fix my spelling. Awesome, all right. So that's what we need to start. Now we're coming back to this if defined Apple, defined Mac OS, and if. So what exactly does this do? So we have a chunk of code. I'm gonna copy and paste it um, from the finished code already just to save us some more time. But let me grab this. And so again, this is going to be what grabs our information, whether it's a Mac or a Linux box. And this is just because the PCAP library has some stuff for Ethernet packets um, that works on a Linux machine, but on a Mac, we don't have the same access. So we got to use um, packet information from non, sorry, we have to use IP packets rather than the Ethernet packets um, to do that. It's just a difference of library information. Um, so here we do our define if def. Now I'm just going to remove the indent here because you'll see these will start from farthest left. So on a Mac, as I just mentioned, the Ethernet headers aren't available, so we skip parsing and we check there's an IP packet. So we're on a Mac, so that is why you see this part um, non uh, grayed out and the Linux portion grayed out, grayed out. So on a Linux box, if that's what you're using, you can use the PCAP data link and that'll allow you to grab um, the Ethernet headers and pull those apart, which gives you your source. Uh, your Mac and your destination Mac and all this other information, which we do not have on the uh, Mac box, but we do have our source and destination IPs, and that's how we're going to grab that here. All right, so now moving forward, we have our information that we're looking for. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to move on to the next portion, which is going to be actually printing out that data um, as hex or as ASCII, as we mentioned. So the first portion we're going to do is going to be our, uh, let's do hex first. So we can just say packet data hex. Okay, and let's just hop to the end. And, uh, and I type on Python too much and always forget some of my operators here, but uh, I go between Python and C++ quite a bit, and uh, sometimes I forget semicolons when I'm back in C++ because I get a little lazy. All right, so we're going to hop through just a basic for loop. So i is 0, i is less than, again, we have our packet header, length, and then and this is just going to walk us through our packet data. And so then from here, we're going to use our print f statement just because it's a little bit easier to uh, pull apart our hex information. So we're going to 0 to x. That's just telling us that it's going to be the first eight bits that we're looking for. And we're going to print out those in groups of eight bits. Um, so that means on your hex, it's going to be 0x something something rather than... So now if you wanted like a 16-bit or 32-bit, etc., you would increase the number of... Uh, value here so 2 is equivalent to two sets of 4 um, which is your 8 bytes bits sorry um, and then here we're just gonna comma which tells us what to push in here and that's gonna be our packet data at I and that's pretty simple for the hex data the conversion will happens in that printf statement so we don't have to go through convert it and then print it uh, you can do something similar with the C out, but it doesn't quite work or perform the same, so printf is just an easier one. And then just a little um, 
thing we put in here is we want to know if i mod 8 is equal to 0. What this is checking is we want to know if we've gone through 8 bytes. Uh, after 8 bytes, then we'll skip to a new line. So that we just do that. And if that is the case, then we're just going to print f and we can do slash n here. And that's pretty much our new line. And that's going to be the end of our packet data for hex. Now we want to do our ASCII. So same thing, little print statement. And we'll just say packet data ASCII. And give it a new line. Same thing, just to save time, we can grab this one here. Copy it. Paste it. Remove this portion here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cast it using a character. So you can just say char c equals. And this is going to do an implicit cast. And we just say packet data at i and we'll let the compiler handle it for us now we want to make sure that it's actually able to cast it so there's something called is print so we're just going to say if is print c which pretty much tests that we're actually able to print it first and if we are we're then going to see out c and there we go else we'll do We'll just print out a dot. So we know every time we print out a dot that um, it was unable to actually uh, print the special character. So this is sometimes there's characters that are um, don't have a keyboard or equivalent ASCII equivalent. So we'll just put a dot in there just so we don't get weird blank spaces and stuff like that that uh, we can't really make sense of. At least here we have a character to reference it to that uh, it didn't work. All right. So that's the end of that for loop. And at the end of that, we're just going to do one more std c out and l just to create a space between. And then we end our packet. And again, cannot forget to do our standard namespace here. We could just use uh, something called using namespace std, which allows us to remove this std colon colon um, and import pretty much the standard namespace to our entire application. But we're not going to do that. Just uh, It's a good habit if sometimes you're using multiple namespaces inside your code to just use the uh, colon colon operator from the to tell what namespace it belongs to. So typically what I do is I just say std colon colon. Um, but yes, enough about that. So that's pretty much all you need to uh, use to pretty much build out your, uh, your packet sniffer here to the level of granularity that we're planning to. Um, on the left side here, um, actually, let me go and just remove some stuff. I ran this through previously just uh, before we were on our video. So let me delete our uh, binary that we created and our log here. Just get a kind of quick sneak peek of what we'll, uh, we'll have here. But we're going to go through and regenerate all this. So now if we go into our terminal, which is probably a bit small, but uh, we'll be able to view everything. Um, and I'll write it in a separate file here, actually, just to make it a bit easier so you can see what I'm actually typing commands. I'll just call it commands.txt. <clears throat> so from here we have a G++ compile command that we want to call. And hey, I'll type it in here too so you can see. So G++ dash O tells it it's an output file. We're going to call it packet sniffer. And then we call our demo packet sniffer.cpp so it knows what we're building. So G++ your compiler dash O argument tells us the output file name. So that's the packet sniffer. And then demo packet sniffer is the file we just wrote. And then we're going to have to do a dash L and pcap, which tells it that we're linking an external library, the pcap library, which we have installed. That uh, library itself, you'll be able to go to Google and just look up pcap lib. Uh, it'll tell you exactly how to install that on your system. It's pretty straightforward, and uh, I already had it on mine, so um, we won't go into that again. It's pretty straightforward from their website. But uh, this is the command we're going to run. So if we run that on the side here, it'll tell us if we have any errors. Uh, and you'll see here I missed a plus, so we see that as on line 86. So it's in one of my loops for printing out this guy. And uh, sure enough, I missed it on both. Look at that lazy typing. 
noob mistakes. All right, so we'll hop back here. That should fix that up for us. Rerun the compiler. There we go. We see blank line. That means we have no issues and we're able to run it. So to do this, you're going to have to be a sudo user. Um, so you just type sudo dot slash and packet sniffer. And then again, like I mentioned, we have to call in the device name. We already know that's EN0. This should ask for my password. Actually, so we'll type that in here. And then your packet sniffer will begin to run. And immediately it starts capturing all kinds of packet data uh, on our network. And this will just keep running indefinitely until you go to kill it. So we can just do a command C, uh, sorry, control C and uh, that'll stop your packet sniffer. And you can see all the data being captured here. Now there's some pretty large packets here. And sometimes the um, ASCII printout will make sense of some data, sometimes it won't. So we'll kind of look through here to see if we have one that we can kind of understand what it's coming from. Um, none of these really, that's just because it's probably uh, encrypted information or information like images and stuff like that over the network. Um, which is fine. Sometimes you'll see stuff that comes through that'll actually say like Apple on it or that. Um, but what we're going to do is in order to put this through on a, um, a log actually here, let me just show you. So the command we wrote just so it's a bit easier dot slash, um, packet sniffer. And then EN zero was our network adapter. And then once that runs, we just do a control plus C to kill it. Now, if we want to send this to a log, uh, we can do that just in the terminal itself, which is good for, for scripting. We can do that as well. But pretty much you're going to run uh, this exact same command right here. And then you're going to use the angle bracket. So greater than, and then you're just going to say, let's call this, um, we can just call log.log, .log. that's fine. And what this will do is then send everything to a log. So let's do that on our terminal here. And you'll see there's no longer a printout coming up in our terminal. What this is, is pretty much we're sending all the standard out into a file called log.log. .log. And you can see here now we're capturing all that information on here. And this is something that we can save, which it's automatically saved to our folder where we're running this from. I'll do a control C here and you'll see this populate with the rest of the data now on the side. And as you can see, we've captured quite a bit. <clears throat> but uh, but yeah, this allows you to go through and actually search, maybe try and make sense of some of the data, uh, but it's all here. Now everything here is kind of squished together. What we can do is make a quick modification here. There should be a space, save that. Let's rerun it. Uh, just a second, we'll have to recompile. Anytime you make any changes, you do have to recompile. Um, and we'll run that again. And I'll show you what that just did to our log file here. And it just spaces out each of those uh, bytes of data. So we got eight in here. And it just makes it a little bit more cleaner to see. Um, we'll kill this again so we don't create too big of a log file. But uh, again, this is all the information that's going over uh, currently my home network. Um, but at the start, you see, here's your program name, the device we're working on. This is our IP. So again, local IP 192.168.whichever, that's our subnet for local home network. We see the packet start tells us we've captured 230 bytes. Source IP is here and the destination IP is here. Now I'm listening to all packets again because we're in the promiscuous mode. So that kind of just really... Um, captures everything that would be going through our network. So that's everything from radio information to my iPhone, my iPad, my Apple Watch, uh, anybody else who's on my network, all that information is coming through here and captured on this. Um, now, to go from here, you could have fun trying to cipher what this means, what this hex values are, determine if it's an image or whatnot. And there's other libraries that you can use to analyze this. Uh, Python would probably be the easiest language to go and make use of that because they're very uh, rich in different libraries like that. Um, but there's a lot of fun you can have with this. This is just to get you started. Now, again, all this information, uh, all this data and everything is in my uh, my GitHub for Polybits. So you'll be able to get this uh, linked below in the description of the video. And uh, that pretty much sums up our packet sniffer. So again, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And if there's anything else in this video, I didn't quite go too much into detail whether you'd like more on, or if there's another video pertaining around you know, cybersecurity, anything like that, 
uh, just let me know in the description and uh, we'll do our best to uh, create a video for you guys. Hope you enjoyed and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.